so does it look like a, a mountain it does right it looks like a mountain for me so yes this script means mountain so this means yama right another another script is like this what does it mean now this this looks like a river does it look like a river a flowing river so this is kawa you know that is a beauty so each script has got its own meaning and that you can see that parallelism uh, Japanese with hieroglyph the Egyptian ancient Egyptian hieroglyph also have got that one script means one meaning so well that is kanji I can write here K A N J I so this is called kanji script other than kanji the Japanese have got two other script the first one is called hiragana Second one is known as katakana. Right? So, what is all about? Hiragana and katakana are like alphabets. It's like A, B, C, D. So, if you know 26 alphabets in English, you can write anything. Right? So, that way, if you know all hiragana, you can write anything. Simple as that. So, katakana is also alphabets. But kanji is not an alphabet. It's a script and it is mostly like one script has got a meaning so that is what so the kanji scripts are something like Chinese script indeed kanji scripts are ancient Chinese Mandarin scripts so if you know all these kanji characters, you can make out you can at least make some informed guess of what that script means in Chinese so that is an added beauty another script I can just show you uh, you know so what does it look like a tree isn't it so this means key or tree right so this is the tree how it looks like so that is what the meaning so if I simply put one like a cut here so you're cutting the tree isn't it so by cutting the tree you're making cellulose and through cellulose you're making paper right and through paper you're making book so this is book home so each one has got one its own meaning that is the beauty of the kanji characters so I can write another character here like this just a square you see the square uh, if you open your mouth wide you know you will get like this kind of uh, shape isn't it the mouth kuchi that is called kuchi or the mouth and the same mouth I can also put like this see that I just divided the same one square into four sub squares so now look like a sub square does it look like a uh, like a you know uh, uh, a rice field a paddy field for you from the top if you're flying in an aircraft look on the paddy field so this is paddy field this is tambo or ta right so the ta ca character is used in many Japanese products for example Toyota Toyota car you know so Toyota Honda so that Honda is like that so how do you write Honda by the way so this is one way to write Honda Hong this is Hong I told you book this is Ta so together in a way when you write Hong and Ta there is Honda so if I write a character Toyota there is Toyota you know and uh, uh, Suzuki for example Suzuki key means tree as I told you, how what is the character for the tree? Like this, the same character, devoid of this cut. So this cut, if I put it is Hong. So if I don't put this cut, it is key. So Suzuki car, you know, Maruti Suzuki, right? So Maruti Suzuki is not Japanese. Suzuki part is Japanese. So Suzuki, the N character is the same thing, key. Key means tree. So that is actually the beauty. So today I'm going to show you one, another character, which is actually very simple this one is what key right so I'm putting like this see that what is that three trees so what does that mean you know I'll just uh, uh, use this one now so basically this is how it has to be just one on the top you know so this is how it looks like three trees 
one tree on the top two trees below so more trees multiple trees will encompass what forest. a forest mori yes that is forest mori the kanji for mori is this okay so this is what the kanji is now today i will uh, yeah last class i have shown you some of the other ca characters one character is hito like this you know it has to touch here so look like a man walking right so like this and this is a torso this is the you know foreleg hind leg right <coughs> so this is hito means man man right that is i uh, covered in the last class then uh, you know these are something called kanji character hiragana now coming to the hiragana hiragana is the original japanese scripts now if you know only hiragana you can survive in japan there is no problem with that but what is the problem with that hiragana so normally the printed materials tend to have a lot of kanji characters so unless you know kanji you cannot understand what it is you know but you can write everything in japanese if you know only hiragana you don't need other two scripts and hiragana is more or less favored by learners of the japanese if you learn japanese for the first time you know you will uh, learn through the hiragana and hiragana is more like uh, you know what what's it like for example ah, i I'll, i'll write a ah here this has been covered in the last class so this is a ah in the hiragana now the same a ah i can write in katakana a ah, a ah in katakana you see that the difference here this hiragana is more like curved right like in in the case of indian language it is like a odia or malayalam more curved while katakana is more angled like assamese right it's more ang angular isn't it so katakana is basically derived from kanji character that is one one thing you should know and the katakana is used only to refer loan words do you know what loan words means for example in malayalam my language we don't have a word for switch you know this switch do you have a word in your language switch no so when you write switch in your language how do you write like in malayalam we write switch <laughs> hindi also you write we don't have any other script but japanese are tricky they have you know these loan words they don't want to use their character they want to say that these are foreign stuff foreign is foreign ours is ours so this typical island mentality they have that these thing like loan words they write it in a separate entirely different script that script is called katakana you got the point right so if i write like kore wa watashi no enpitsu desu that means this is my stapler kore wa watashi no enpitsu desu that is how you say so now everything is japanese no problem except you know hochukisu uh, now i'm saying about hochukisu hochukisu is that stapler kore wa watashi no hochukisu desu so hochukisu is derived from german so is it a original japanese word it is not so they will write only hochukisu part in katakana all the rest i can write either kanji or hiragana and hiragana is normally the first learners of that language like uh, you know shogaku se elementary school kids normally they learn through hiragana only and then kanji kanji will be advanced so how many kanji character by the way this kind of character that is really tricky so you know elementary school they start learning with 500 characters 500 characters you see that you have to buy hard everything now going to the high school it's something like 5000 characters you should know 5000 characters if you want to pass the uh, you know high school now you know by by after passing out the high school and an adult japanese know around 10000 to 20000 different characters so looks like a difficult job for rest of us but japanese are japanese no it's not like too difficult to learn it's not like that you know french kids french is a tough language but there are kids in france they learn french right it's not a big deal so anyway the beauty of japanese i want to tell you is that well these are the three characters these scripts i told you the beauty of japanese is that if you are from india indian languages we follow the syntax the grammatical syntax is subject object you know verb right so uh, that that is what it is so the the sov language so this one is also an sov language 
instead you know in in the case of english it is a verb based in the middle subject verb object am drinking tea see drink comes in the between right in the in the middle so in the japanese for example watashi wa ocha wo nondeimasu watashi means i wa ocha means what tea o nondeimasu if i say that same thing in malayalam nyan chaya kudichu kondirikkunu so exactly same is word to word translation japanese and malayalam or uh, you know the hindi or whatever your language that is the beauty so it's actually very simple very fast to learn japanese for indians so that is actually a, a natural thing another big advantage is that if i if i write like a word like this you know so how do you read this word bukho is say na it it means it has to read like bushwa bushwa you know but it's that is a, the problem with uh, many of the words in english we borrow from french or italian or german and these have got it's not the way you write the way you read i entirely different another word i simply give you an example s c h e d u l e what is that schedule right many people say schedule even the railway announcement is like that schedule to arrive in 2 hours 40 minutes right schedule that is not the way schedule so not even dual schedule schedule so see that it's very difficult that is a problem for us as well as other learners of english that you should know how exactly the word is being pronounced but that problem is not in japanese so what do you write what do you read it's exactly same so there is no confusion so that is a big advantage i would say right so given this uh, context so we will come to today's class so today's class we will uh, see you know some really basic i will start with really basic sentence construction okay so how do you construct a basic sentences so let us say first is that you know uh, kore wa em pitsu so it's a very very simple sentence here kore wa em pitsu desu right what does that mean kore means you know this Wa is like is, empitsu is pencil, right? And desu, desu is like he, the end. You know, in, in Hindi we have he, or in Malayalam we have ana. I'm sure every language will have. What is in your language? Huh? Any any other languages here? Assam. Other than Assam is what is that last? Do you have anything at the end? How do you how do you say that? This is pencil. How do you say? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, after that, the end. Ah, uh, okay. So that uh, it looks like it doesn't have. But most of the Indian languages we have an end word. So that end word is this desu here in in uh, in Japanese. So if I say the same thing in Malayalam, it either pencil. Ah. Uh, no. Ah yes, asti in Sanskrit, right? So, what? Say, Haryan we say. Oh yeah, anyway, the same stuff. You look at that. Either means koreva, pencil on, right? So that exactly is how to. Uh, this is how uh, the really basic sentence. Now look, look, kore means either, right? This, either means this basically, right? Uh, are a a r a so don't never say this as r like in english word or no are i can i can put like this are korean are are wa empitsu this means that is a pencil is that clear to you so you can uh, change this empitsu to anything kabang desu means kabang is a bag so that is a bag kore wa tsukue desu yo so that means this is a table tsukue is a table right so that is what i have given you in this uh, you can download this one 
very basic sentence construction uh, this assignment is there in the website so what it is it says that grammar components will be the first one and these are all example nouns example nouns I can read it out for example car is kuruma PC is pasokong pencil is empitsu mobile phone is keitai denwa so what I suggest is just make one small notebook and so whenever I ask you to translate something from Japanese or to Japanese so my suggestion is that you use your language never take a, a indirect route through English that will not help you so use your language Hindi to Japanese so if you write this one forever MPC see what I did either pencil on it because I'm comfortable in my language same way you can use Assamese here you know you don't even have to use Hindi then Assam you know just Assam it directly so that's much better for you if you are someone from uh, Tamil Nadu just use the Tamil so it's actually much more simpler and straightforward to understand right so I told you about this one so if I say kore wa pasokon desu means what yes this is a computer this is a personal computer pasokon is personal computer right now how do you make a question here it's exactly the same T Koreva empitsu desu means what this is a pencil so is this a pencil now the question so same way Koreva so I can write here Koreva empitsu desu ka see desu ka only here is a end is the only difference from an affirmative statement and an interrogation a question so here is just that desuka in malayalam is exactly same like either pencil ano means this is pencil either pencil ano only the end is different it's like hindi also i think you know hey kya you can write like that hey kya hey mera pencil hai hey mera pencil hey kya you know same way so only the end is the difference here look at that that is what so this is a pencil now in english it is is it a pencil everything is all changed right in english so that is why this is a lot more straightforward to understand it directly so koreva empitsu uh, desuka so if i ask you a simple question is this your bag how will you ask that question Oh yeah, absolutely. Koreva kabang desuka, you know. So desu desuka, you know. That is the end. That's the only difference here. It's actually very very simple now. Okay. So koreva. Now little bit possessive here. I'm I'm asking like it's not simple pencil. It's my pencil. So my is watashi, right? So I is watashi. Watashi. You is anata right so now possessive form is a of in English of right in Japanese it is no so like my pencil will become watashi no empitsu so I let me translate that so this is the first sentence right korewa empitsu desu i'm just writing here korewa kore wa wata shi no empitsu desu so full stop instead of full stop in japanese it is maru that means simple one round right so desu is like that now what is that koreva watashi no empitsu desu it's not simple pencil it's my pencil that is a watashi no empitsu this malayalam also same thing either ende pencil honor same look at that exactly same hindi also same am i right how do you how do you say ye meri pencil hai. ye ye meri pencil hai same thing you know meri is a watashi no empitsu desu ye meri pencil hai kya <laughs> so that way also you can say that Koreva Vadaj no Empitsu Desuka. No, simple. Is that clear? So let me pick uh, one of you, uh, Aniket. Uh, is this your bag? So a question. Is this your bag? How will you say? 
no, 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 in, in Japanese. This is a Japanese class, not Marathi class. Okay, bag is kabang. Koreva? No, Koreva kabang desuka means is that a bag? No, no, I'm, I want. That's okay, but where is the possessiveness here? Is that your pencil? That is what I'm asking. Ah. That's right, yes. Koreva anatano kabang desuka? Are you getting the point? So, Koreva is okay. Watashi became anata, you. No, embitsu, instead of embitsu, it's kabang. Whatever it is. Hochukisu or, uh, you know, or a pen or empitsu or kuruma. You know, kuruma means car. Right? So, Koreva watashi no empitsu desu. Now, so watashi no, I can make it a double possessive here. You know, I can say like, Areva. Areva means what? That one, right? Areva. Anatha. No. Anatha no means? Yours, right? Anatha no. Tomo. Dachi. No. Kuruma. Desuka. <coughs> what is that? Ah, yes. So, Areva Anata no Tomodachi no Kuruma Desuka. Tomodachi means friend. So, is that your friend's car? So, it's a question. So, double possessive. You see that? Koreva Anata no Tomodachi no Kuruma Desuka. So, let me uh, again I'll write. Koreva Niho Hongo No Hong Desuka. What is that? Koreva Nihongo means Japanese. Right? Nihongo is Japanese. So Nihongo no Hong Desuka. Yes, Hong is book. I told you Hong is book. So same kanji character, you know. Uh, this is what, right? Hong. Ni is very interesting character. Ni is like this. So it's like a square with a, you know, with a uh, what a line in between, in the middle. So this one is a he. He or Nichi means sun. And sun can also have another meaning, day. Nichi is day. So well. Again, that is a sensible, right? When sun comes, day comes. So day and sun is related, isn't it? Sunday is also the same, Nichi Obi. Nichi, the same Nichi. Right, this one is Hong. So you can say Ni, ni Hong. Is that clear? Ni Hong. Ni Hong is Japan in Japanese. Like Bharat is our India, right? So that is what it is, right? Ni Hong. So, right, is that clear to you, Nihong? So, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, con confusing here, like. So, this is a character for Go. Go means Kotoba. So, anyway, this one means, this is Go, G-O. This is Ni, this is Hong. So, Go means... Anyone can tell me what is go? Someone out there? This go. What is the meaning of this? Go means language. Simple. Right? It's language. So, Nihong is Japan plus the language. So, Japanese. Simple. So, same way you can say, uh, you know, Germany in Japanese is called Doitsu. So German will become oh yes doitsu go Italy is Italia so Italian is Italia go same thing so only this part will change Italia go Spain go is Spanish right Igiris go is or a go is English that is the difference here right so this is a kanji for Nihongo Right? So I can write here Koreva Nihongo means the same thing. Nihongo no Hong. Hong is this character, Hong. There is book. 
Desuka means hmm? is this the Japanese book that is what it is a clear to you right so can you make this kind of sentences simple sentences so a lot of exercises are there in this assignment so please do it okay so that is what uh, here I would like to tell you so uh, you know another example I will tell you So where, <coughs> that is doko, okay, so kuni, country, so I, I write here one sentence, anata, no, Okuniwa Doko Desuka So if I say that same thing in Malayalam Ningalude Rajyam Evide Anna So you can write that in uh, Hindi also the same thing So Anathano Kuniwa Doko Desuka means Where is your country? Same thing, where is your country? Doko desuka means the end. Doko desuka, where? Anata no means yours. Okuni wa. So, kuni is country. Why, where comes this O? See, that is what? In Japanese, there are polite forms, respectful forms. So, you cannot simply say the same stuff to your uh, friends and to your teacher, you know, to the elders. This is highly polite forms you will have to use. So, for example, simple thing, chopstick is called hashi, right? So, the same chopstick, if you are asking your teacher, could you please bring the chopstick to me? I know, ohashi o kudasai. So, you will have to say that more politely. Ohashi. So, if you put that o, so it becomes more polite. Ohashi <coughs> than simple hashi, you know? So, that way to make it more politeful, you will have to use o. So, simple, another example is Anatha no o namai wa or simple o namai wa I can write here o namai wa So, that means namai means name o namai wa means what is your name So, you can write fully Anatha no namai but nobody uses like that Anatha no you, know, you can easily avoid it o namai wa means What's your name? So then on the answer you say Watashi no namae wa So that time you never use O namae wa So O is only for the second person The others, right? If I say myself It's not polite I don't, I don't need any politeness, right? To myself So I say Watashi no namae wa Felix this Right? Or simple answer could be Felix this That could also suffice Right? So, anatha no kuni wa doko desu ka? So, another, another example I will tell you. Anatha. Hmm? So, that is what? Anatha wa uh, Felix san desu ka? So, that time, when you call the other's name, for example, uh, you know, the Mr., Mrs., or Miss, so instead of that, san is used as a suffix. Not as a prefix, but as a suffix. Are you getting the point? So when I call somebody, you know, uh, Aniket, for example, Anathawa Aniket Sang Desuka. So are you Mr. Aniket? So that time I, I call Sang. But if I say myself, I'm Mr. Felix, no, come on. I'm Felix only, I will say, right? Mr. is like respectful. In Japanese, that kind of respect, Sang, respect is only for the second person or third person, never for ourselves. Right? So that way you can say Anatha no Neko no Nama e wa na desuka. 
so nam means what so like that i i can say you areva nam deska areva nam deska means what is that is that clear nam is not that uh, you know the the punjabi naan that we eat but in japanese naan means what endana you know naan deska in malayalam is endana so the same way naan desuka means what is that ah uh, neko means cat so if i say neko means cat can someone help me to translate this sentence yes can you srishti yes absolutely what is your cat's name or oh, what is the name of your cat same thing so anatha no neko no namaiva nam this same sentence please write it in your language and see that how close japanese and your language is yeah you can do that please do that you know don't actually write that in english but then it becomes a lot more confusing but if you write in your you know the indian language it's exactly same and it's a lot more intuitive to learn the japanese so you can easily pick it up the japanese language if you translate to your language for example malayalam if i say ende poochiyade pere anatha means ninde ninde poochiyade pere endanu same thing exactly same right so that is what it is right so if i say another, another uh, example here <coughs> are wa dare no kitai den wa desu ka so what does it mean are wa dare no kitai den wa desu ka dare means who's you know who or who's right so dare no means who's dare means who it's a possessive always no is always possessive so are wa means that dare no means who's kitai den wa is mobile phone desu ka question so who's mobile phone is that are wa dare no kitai den wa desu ka are wa prahar san no kitai den wa desu ka means is it prakars kitai den wa that is mobile phone i can i can simply change it interchange it and put that you know are you getting the point so that is uh, you know uh, i can do that so i will simply send, tell you another another sentence are wa anata no neko desu ka means neko cat you know are wa anata no neko desu ka means is that your cat another sentence are wa nihongo no hong desu ka japanese book so areva that i think i have already told you that just a while ago no no areva that nihongo no hon desu ka means is that japanese book areva doitsu go no hon desu ka means is that a german book same way no oh, very very simple right so another another one i told you anatha no neko no namai wa nan desu ka <laughs> that is the same thing i told you anatha no neko no namai wa nan this means what is the name of your cat clear is it is it easy for you or is it difficult for you so that way you know um, if i if i ask you uh, this is my car how will you translate my car not anatha the anatha is you no you say like see if i ask you to translate anything first you translate that to your language then to japanese so it's much easier kore wa kore wa watashi no kuruma desu this is my car desu desu ka is always a question mark so it's not a question it's an affirmative sentence so desu so prakar now you will translate another thing uh, that uh, where is your country
I think you just all heard what she's saying. Anathano. Ah, yes. Anathano. What did you say? Kuniwa. Doko desuka. That's absolutely fine, but only one minor problem there. What is the minor problem? Kuni. Kuni has a politeness. Your kuni, your country is never uh, impolite. Oh. <laughs> so, anathano okuni wa doko desu ka? Is that clear? So that way you can uh, say it out, right? So that way, uh, for example, you know, another some example. Kore wa, you know, kore wa empitsu desu means this is pencil, right? So that's simple as that. So then, uh, you know, is that a bag? Can someone help me to translate? Is that a bag? Huh? Uh. So, see, all right. Uh, see, the, I just want to emphasize. Just want to emphasize one point that in your case, you know, in earlier example, you try to get confused about syntax. So, it, to to avoid that syntax confusion, first, you know, that this English translate to your language, then from that language to English, much easier, straightforward approach. Okay. So now I'm asking, uh, is is that a bag? Is Areva kabang desu ka? Simple. That. Is this a bag means? Would be? Kore wa kabang desu ka? You know? So, uh, another one. This is my mobile phone. How will you say? Desu, yes. What's the name, by the way? Huh? Chaitanya Kumar. Ravi Ranya Kumar. Really great. You know, you're you're translating very fast. Yeah. Same thing. Koreva Vadashi no Ketai Denva Desu. Simple. Desu ka is a question mark. Desu is a stop. So Koreva Vatashi no Ketai Denva Desu. Again I, I emphasize translate to your language. You're you're from Orissa, Uri, right? Bihar. So that is basically Hindi only, right? So translate to Hindi. Then from Hindi to Japanese yeah. because syntax is same uh, it is actually verb is at the end O V group S O V group so that is a lot more straightforward now next is that uh, next is that whom will I ask you I can ask us uh, uh, Samreen okay Samreen please answer what is the name of your cat how will you ask so the same approach first you translate to your language your language is what Urdu Hindi or Urdu, whatever. So translate first to your language, then to Japanese. So how will you answer? Only her, only her. Yes. Huh? Ah, Anata. Ah, yes. Anata no neko. No namai. Wa. Nandesu ka. Yes, it's a because it's a question mark. Exactly same. See, look at that. It's only in the first class. Now you have already started translating Japanese. Wow, fantastic. So that's great. Okay, so now I'm asking another course a person. Uh, what's the name? Suryan Shu. please translate. Is that book belongs to Japanese or is that a Japanese book? How will you ask? Absolutely. Arewa Nihongo no Hong Desuka. You got the point, right? The C syntax very simple. The sentence construction, you know. Now another point is that uh, to you. What's the name? Navjot. Whose cat is that? Neko. Na no, there is no na. Where did that na comes from? Neko deska. Yes. Areva dare no neko deska. Simple. Areva means that, right? Areva dare no neko deska. So as well, uh, and I want to tell you the, uh, one more thing. What you write is what you read. There is no intricate pronunciation, you know, or phonetics. Not much matter. So that's why 
you know that accent is all very simple what you write what you write is what you read so that is why another beauty of the Japanese right and uh, and uh, whom should I ask you over there uh, you know what's the name again mister hmm? what Nirupam Rupam yes Rupam where is my pencil First, I told you the same way. First, you translate to Assamese. You are from Assam, right? Yeah, so translate to Assamese. Where is my pencil? First, translate to Assamese, then to Japanese. Mm. So, if I if I want to say that in my language, Ende pencil every day, Ende means my pencil. Every day means where. So where comes in the end in my language, right? Watashi no empitsu wa doko desu ka? Yes. Where is my pencil is? Watashi no empitsu wa doko desu ka? Is that clear to you? Right. So then uh, we have assignments. So I'll randomly pick some of this assignment thing also, okay? So for example, right? <coughs> So, for example, Arewa, I'm just reading that in Japanese. You try to translate it, okay? Right? So, Arewa Pavana san no tomodachi no neko desu ka? How will you translate? Arewa Pavana san no tomodachi no neko desu ka? That 13th, if you can see that assignment 13, I just changed the name. So, Arewa Pavana san neko no tomodachi desu ka? Arewa Pavana san no tomodachi no neko desu ka? Pavana, can you answer that? Slowly, you know, just divide into Arewa. No, no. Arewa Pavana Sang no Tomodachi no Neko Desu ka? Yes. Friend. Tomodachi is friend. Is that Pavana's friend's cat? <laughs> you know, I got the point. Tomodachi is a friend. So if I say Anathawa, you know, I'm asking a question to Saba. Saba, I'm asking. Anathawa Watashi no Tomodachi desu ka? Anathawa Watashi no Tomodachi desu ka? Means what? Yeah. Anathawa means you. Watashi no Tomodachi desu ka? Ah, yes. Are you my friend? You know, that is what it is. Anathawa. Watashi no tomodachi desu ka means yes so are you my friend that is how it is right is she a teacher how will you translate she is kanojo teacher is sensei right is she a teacher how will you translate that oh yes absolutely the answer has already come right is she a teacher is she so teacher is sensei <coughs> she is kanojo so is she a teacher kanojo wa sensei desu ka simple kanojo wa sensei desu ka our teacher ano in Malayalam, that is how we say our teacher Ano. The subject is the first one, right? And then coming to the teacher, then finally Ano. Hey, kya? So that way you can say that. So uh, uh, next one is that Sopang Sang no Jimoto wa doko desu ka? Mr. Sopang Jimoto wa doko desu ka? Jimoto is home place, right? So how will you, uh, you know, the, do that? Soba Sang No. Yes? 
Kanoju wa sensei desuka. Yes, it's a desuka. Yeah, always. Questions are mostly ends with desuka. So desu affirmative sentences to convert that to a question, simply put that into desuka. So it is a, you know, that way you can say that. So sopang sang no jimoto wa doko desuka yes yeah that's the same thing the you know the birthplace or hometown where is the hometown of mr sobang you know same way so now soban you why don't you answer where is your hometown by the way Odisha. no Odisha where exactly uh, Bhuvaneshwar so sh see Shu is the state Od Odisha Shu no Bhuvaneshwar you can say that way or simply say Bhuvaneshwar right so you will say that how will you answer this question why don't you please come come up here just come here and try to answer right here uh, you know my hometown yeah anyway it doesn't matter so my hometown is Bhubaneshwar how will you write uh, Watashino no Jimoto Jimoto wa Bhubaneshwar Desu yes absolutely see he was actually a little bit tricky he is confused about these nouns this word words are nothing really you know it's only the memory power you should think about grammar a syntax so that is the base so if you forget your some of these words you can look up in the dictionary not a big deal you know and learning a language I think the most important skill is the, to understand its grammar so if you know the grammar you can survive right so that is what so uh, sang no jimoto wa doko desu ka so I can uh, he will answer it watashi no jimoto wa odisha shu no bhubaneshwar desu only that desu is the end right so then uh, you know i will ask you ask you uh, is that a cat sound i can hear a cry is that the cry belongs to a cat ah uh, anyone can help me to translate that ah yes Areva Nekono Nakigoe Desuka. Yes, correct. Areva Nekono Nakigoe Desuka means is that the cat's voice? Areva Inu no Nakigoe Desuka means is that the voice of Inu? Inu is dog. So I can answer it. Iye. Areva inu no nakigoe desu. Iye means no. No, that is a dog's cry. So, Iye areva inu no nakigoe desu. That means no. That cry belongs to a dog. Is that clear? You are a bit confused. What is it? Ah, this you don't have. No problem. This is only for uh, the words okay so so many words we have it only for the purpose of sentence construction and translation so you simply download this one it's available in my website so and then you try to attempt all this assignment and then show me the answers before your next class that is uh, 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 you know in the next uh, Tuesday Tuesday 5 o'clock 5 to 6 we'll have a class okay so before that you can try anyone by the way not even in your students some of you are watching my class here so you are welcome to please submit your this one and we also have one uh, discussion forum in the website so you know sometimes I ask a question in the discussion forum so try to answer that question like translation basically translation from Japanese and translation to Japanese so some different kinds of things I will ask you so try to answer those uh, questions as well in the discussion forum of my website. So, how do you access my website? Search my name, you know, Felix Bast in Google and click the first link. Simple as that. F E L I X B A S T. That's my name, right? Felix Bast. 
and click the first link is that clear to you and this is this you can download it right so you know today I will also tell you some of these uh, greetings the normal greetings so the uh, first greeting is Oyasumi Nasai I can write here right or Oyasumi Nasai so Oyasumi Nasai means good night clear so it's a set phrase so don't worry about that it's a set phrase and another set phrase is arigato arigato yes somebody was saying thank you yes arigato means thank you so being a more polite form of arigato is arigato gozaimashita or arigato gozaimasu right uh, last class i told you good morning anyone remember ohayo yes so ohayo gozaimasu is more polite right like when you when you meet your parents you never say ohayo you always say ohayo gozaimasu you know and if you meet your teacher whatever no the respect those people who really you know looking for your respectful conversation you have to talk in gozaimasu so that is what and the gozaimasu is not every time you know it depends upon your statement so these are all set phrase another word i will tell you is gomen So gomen. What is that? Gomen. Gomen means sorry. Or gomen nasai means I'm sorry. You know, gomen nasai. So that is what. Arigato is thank you. Gomen is uh, sorry. I told you. Then another word is very interesting word that is called S U G O I. Sugoi. Sugoi means wow, wonderful. You no, know? sugoi. So if your performance is really good, Prahar is uh, you know doing really great job, then I can say, Prahar san sugoi this ne. That means wow, what a performance. Sugoi is wow. Is that clear? So another one is that you know in Japanese the culture is so much intricately linked to the system, right? So before eating they pray. Pray in the sense it's not the God. It's like thank you for you know that uh, uh, particular meal. So you are like thanking the rice uh, paddies that made that rice. Are you getting the point? So it's like uh, you know being mindful. So expressing their gratitude in a way it's always good. Lot of psychological studies says that if you are saying like to, just to remember two things or three things you are really thankful in every day before you sleep, you feel a lot more happy. You know. So now well. Anyway, before eating, they say itadakemasu. Itadakemasu is like you know, like uh, holding like as in as in a prayer. They say it, then they start eating. So it's a set phrase. Itadakemasu, right? So that is another set phrase here. Itadakemasu. So why do you want to learn that itadakemasu? So if you have ever been to Japan and if you simply eat without saying itadakemasu, then it's a little bit impolite. You know, so if you are in Rome, be a Roman the same way. If you are in Japan, you know, do what Japanese do. So that that is what itadaki. So after eating, so people say go chi so sama. So that is another word, right? Go chi so sama is just like thank you for wonderful meal like that. You know, go chi so sama or go chi so sama deshita. So that is yet another uh, set phrase I told you. Right? Ogenki is another one which I already told you in the last class. Ogenki this ka is are you fine? Hi Genki this is the answer. Hi is yes. Genki this is the answer, right? So I can write here. O Genki Desuka. So this one I told you today. I, I told you about desuka and desu, right? Desu is affirmative, while desuka is a question. So genki desuka is always some something they are asking, right? Or also I told you, or hashi for example is simple to make a word more polite, right? So genki means fine, right? Fine. So it's like, are you fine or how are you? That is what o genki desu ka. So the the way to answer is hi. 
गेंकी देसु सो हाई मीन्स यस इट्स नॉट लाइक इंग्लिश हाई नो हाई मीन्स यस ई ए मीन्स नो राइट सो दैट इज वॉट इट इज राइट इफ इट्स नो दैन इट इज हाँ या दैट्स राइट हिंदी दैट वे इट्स बेटर टू यू नो रिमेंबर सो अदर वे इट इज आई आई ई ए ई ए मीन्स नो right hi means yes hi genki desu now you see the intricacy of japanese uh, uh, you know punctuation mark in english the comma is like towards left right like this this is a comma but japanese uh, punctuation is towards right see this is a comma in japanese in english the period is just one full stop a bullet but japanese full stop is a maru a uh, small round that's only a difference you know is that clear to you uh, another one i want to tell you is that how do you actually if it's a book you know can you give me a book this is a book right so if it's a japanese book how do you start you know in english book we start from the page 1 and then towards like this right the japanese book start from the end the last page will be here and then go back so it's something like a arabic book or urdu book or arabic book is like that right but now arabic will be right to left right to left but uh, japanese is very tricky it's actually a right to left right to left but it's not this way it is actually towards down so you are starting from the last page this is the last page and from the last page you are you are starting from right top this corner and towards down then little bit left again down <laughs> this is how the japanese the <coughs> typical japanese style okay so there is that is another peculiarity of the japanese language is it clear any doubt till now is it clear to you all yes. then i will stop right here so i want to tell you one more thing that please download the duolingo app so the app is called duolingo right so duo in the sense to lingo means language so two languages so you can learn from english to any other language so uh, only caveat of using duolingo is that you are learning from english and i told you that is not an effective strategy to the best way to learn japanese is from your language because we are indians you know and the syntax is very similar to the indian language so that is the best way but anyway it's a lot fun how many of you have the duolingo by the way a yeah, few of you have the duolingo are you are you enjoying it yeah all right so the duolingo is like a game basically uh, it's adaptive it is something like an artificial intelligence it will know you the way you are comfortable with the pace you are comfortable with uh, it can identify which characters or which grammatical problems you have so that is something called personalized education you know personalized medicine most of your biology student you know it right so same way Hmm? See, for example, if uh, unfortunately if I have like uh, cancer, you know, a lung cancer, so you know I will simply go and uh, get a lung cancer treatment, you know. So it's like one tablet, one chemotherapeutic tablet for all lung cancer that might not work in my case, you know. So each disease have its own like SNP. I can genotype it. Then which treatment will work best for me? right so that treatment i take it that is called personalized medicine that is now emerging as a great field similar way in education it's also coming up like earlier days even now rich people can afford one to one tutor i can teach everything to only prakar prakar will have to pay a huge amount to me that is the only problem you know but what is the beauty of that i can exactly identify what is his weakness and i can strengthen his weakness but that is not possible in this kind of software Yes, now it is possible. It's called Bayesian learning. You know the Bayesian statistics. I taught you, right, in last year. So Bayesian statistics, prior probability, and it keeps on refining as the new evidence come, right? So as you learn, the software will identify your weakness and push you forward. That is the beauty of that one. I told you the pro two problems with Duolingo. First problem is that you are learning from english so that is a problem i told you this is not a good strategy from your language is better second problem in duolingo there is no writing part it's only reading identifying match you know it's like a game i told you 
for learning Japanese you should write it and the way to write it is something entirely different you know for that you should actually be uh, you know you should be attentive in the class so I'm going to tell you like for example uh, you know Yama I told you today I introduced that Yama Kanji right this is the Yama Kanji so can I start with this the, the first line then this then this then this you know this is a wrong way to write it so there is actually a right way to write a Kanji character and a wrong way to write also so the right way is like this so that is called kakikata so kakikata to know you should really be attentive in the class so there is no other way out and how do you actually learn how to write if you are not in the class for example some of you are watching through online how do you know it simply search out in google how to write a how to write u so then the, the lot of people are learning japanese you know it's one of the popular uh, jap the language you know especially in the us americans uh, really want to learn the japanese so uh, there are a lot of videos available in the YouTube. How to write a character? You know, for example, ah. I've already covered all those characters in the last class, so you can re review it. Okay, so ah is written like this. Ah. Right. The first is this line, then this, then this. E is written like this. E. G is written like this. G. Ni is written like this. Ni. Right? So, E, G, Ni, A. So, these are all hiragana scripts. I told you there are three scripts in Japanese hiragana, then katakana, and then kanji. So, if, we, if you ask me honestly, which, which script do I like it? What do you expect? Kanji, yes. Kanji is the most interesting, really beautiful, right? Because one character has got, see this, you know, this character has got one meaning. So that is the beauty of it. And these meanings are connected. For example, Thumbo, you know, this is what Thumbo means, right? So Thumbo, this character is means rice field. It can also mean rice. It can also be into the related meanings like Gohan, Gohan means the food that we eat, you know, rice food. Actually, the Jap Japanese eat three times rice. But it can never mean, for example, heavy, you know, a snake. Impossible, right? So that is what, the, so connected semantics is the beauty of the Japanese language. And this one is Go, I told you, Kotoba. Go means, this character means? Go, that means? language yes so that this means language now look at that language character has got see if I, if I want to say that this character here up to here this means writing kaku right the kaku is also here now another character here what is this character only this character mouth kuchi that is kuchi so this is kuchi and this is go number five go uh, another kuchi so what is the relation here a language you learn through your mouth as well as through writing isn't it so there is a connection that is why the kanji is really really beautiful language i mean beautiful script but the caveat here is that the kanji a lot of kanji characters so you know remembering all this character is really tricky but at least if you know like 2000 characters then you can easily pass jlpt what is a jlpt by the way Japanese language proficiency test which is like TOEFL or IELTS so why do you want to take the JLPT I tell you it's not that immensely tough for us because we are Indians and the sentence I told you that is a grammar is a really tricky point for us the grammar is easy right and why do you want to clear JLPT if you want to go to Japan to work or if you want to go to Japan to study as an undergraduate right so otherwise if you want to go to Japan for PhD you don't need JLPT nothing is required but learning Japanese is advantageous for you definitely so from zero nothing I don't know Japanese or I know little Japanese so you know you will have a better impression you can make an impression to the interview team so if you are interested to go to Japanese you know Japan for your PhD the best way is Monbusho 
so that is Monbuga Agusho is Japanese government scholarship scheme so you can apply for it and you can go for that you know are you aware of that so in every field you know Monbuga test is there I mean um, program is there so that will give you ample of uh, stipend for your um, PhD so even if you have nothing no money no problem you can go right <coughs> so that is what uh, so before I go I can I can show you just one more character okay so that is what the kanji the beauty of kanji right so this is a character so there's one line also here okay so this is a character so what does it look like does it look like a rain falling rain <laughs> Ame, yes, Ame. So this is a character. There is a line, one line also here. So that is what, right? This is Ame. Ame means rain. Ame character, right? So that is what. I can also tell you another character because these characters are really, really interesting. So this is one character, okay? A cross with uh, these two things. You got the point right so I can I can write again like this like X and uh, these two things so does it look like a man with two sticks yeah so this is father father Chichi yes Chichi right so that a man here with a mouth so man holding a mouth right so this one is migi migi means right hidari is left migi is right what is the what is the connection here right and mouth anybody can answer that right ah yes you eat with your right hand <laughs> you know as simple as that see there is some connection right so that semantic connection is what I like most so you eat with your right hand so that is why this migi means right now coming to hidari hidari is left he is like this so it looks like an H shaped stuff right a man is holding one H shaped lantern so that is what hidari so I don't know why it is actually left hidari must be having you know these are very ancient scripts so each character has got that meanings so that is what this one is hidari the way i remember is this looks like h hidari <laughs> okay and this is migi okay migi is right while hidari is left so one more two more i can introduce to you uh, the two more characters are like this so you know see that there is actually a kind of a, a platform you know and a stick projector stick and on the top of a stick another stick so this means uwe 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 means on top uwe top right u e i can write like this uwe so another character is t i write t and then you know a slanting line from top to bottom shita shita means down Shita. Shita means down or bottom. Right? Shita. Uwe means top. Shita means bottom. Is that clear? So just look at here. This is basically on the top. While this one is towards bottom. Simple. Just by looking you know what it means. So top, bottom and this one is right. And this is Hidari left. So even if you don't know how to read it. For example, this, this means migi this is hidari even if you don't know how to read it migi and hidari you don't know but at least you should know the meaning so if you know the meaning the beauty is that you can at least understand the chinese too so, you know these are deeply conserved the meanings never change that easily so the characters deep meanings are highly conserved so just by looking at some of this uh, uh, you know some of the uh, chinese book for example or made in china product behind or whatever it is you no know? uh, if you are interested to learn chinese too of course you know this this will help you out the kanji will help you okay any questions all right 
So, uh, arigato gozaimasu. So, before going, we can say jamata, like jai mata. <laughs> jamata means see you again. Jamata, so that means see you again. Sayonara, that is also just fine. Sayonara, you know. Sayonara, no. Sayonara. Sayonara means goodbye. Right? So, 